Now, what I'm going to talk about is subtraction imaging, and it's actually a technique that is, in principle, not so much different from dual energy when it comes to the outcomes. You have a low and high energy image in dual energy. You can do a virtual non-contrast, a iodine map. You can mix them up or create virtual monogenic images. But you can do very much the same in subtraction. You have, of course, a non-contrast image already. You can create an iodine map by subtracting the pre-contrast from the post-contrast. You can mix both images, and you can create a contrast boost. Now, if you look at bone removal on dual energy CTA, we have basically two problems. One is that if you look at an iodine image, you only can remove one type of uh, tissue. In this situation, it's soft tissue. So you see the enhancement everywhere, but you also see the bones. So you need to try another trick to get rid of the bones, but that trick actually is not perfect, as you can see on the right-hand side, where there's calcifications which not have been completely removed from these dual energy scans. Now, subtraction CTAs, yeah, as I said, just subtracting the pre-contrast from the post-contrast, but if you do that, you get artifacts, thanks to motion. So you do need a registration and ideally noise reduction. By doing so, we get an image that provides us without any bones, so calcium is completely removed, also the calcifications in the, in the vessel wall. And by adding this image to the original one, we actually get a contrast-boosted image very closely related to what we know from the monogenic images from uh, dual energy. Now, the main uh, application in uh, many clinical uh, situations is background removal. And here's an example of a patient with a flow diverter, where if you look at the pre-contrast scan, you're not so sure whether there, uh, there is some residual enhancement in the proximal carotid. Uh, there seems to be a thrombus there, but is there still some marginal flow at the, at the rim? And if you look at the subtraction, basically the flow diverter is completely occluded. So a superb evaluation in these situations where we have high-density objects lying around. Toshiba has gone one step further for the coronaries, where obviously everything is a little bit more complex because we have uh, small structures and quite a bit of problems. Uh, they have a two-step approach in which we have an approximate uh, registration of CTA and a calcium score image. Um, then, on this registered calcium score image, the calcium is uh, segmented, including a bit of the blurring, and this is then subtracted, and that gives you a very nice subtraction imaging because there's an additional fine registration step that corrects all the minor mistakes there. And the result is quite amazing. In this patient where you see substantial calcium in the LAD and uh, also in the uh, um, diagonal branches, we see it's completely new moved and see a normal uh, size vessel in this situation. Why is it superior to just a threshold-based or dual energy-based uh, techniques, that's because usually we have some blurring due to the uh, spatial resolution of the scanner. That's taken into account with subtraction, but not with the other techniques. So the advantages is the blurred edges are removed, which gives you a corrector uh, diameter stenosis estimate, and we remove basically all calcium also outside the skeleton, uh, and we get, therefore, superb subtraction CTA. But Accurate non-registered registration is important, and Toshiba has, I think, done a very good job in doing so. But there is one problem. If there is residual motion on the source images, those very frequently cannot be compensated because these images just can't be registered anymore. So I think it's very important to instruct the patients correctly. Iodine mapping is another application of dual energy. Uh, we know it, for example, for the lung, pulmonary, uh, and dual energy imaging. But the problem with dual energy is that we only use the small difference between the high KV and the low KV. So in other words, we throw away the signal of the high KV image. That gives us a loss of signal-to-noise ratio, which we don't have when we look at subtraction imaging, where we get the full uh, signal uh, of 100 KV, because what we're actually subtracting is the baseline signal. So much higher signal-to-noise ratio, up to a factor of three for a classic abdominal ap uh, application. And that I'm not saying anything stupid. Here's a a uh, simulation done by someone who is very closely linked to uh, Siemens. He simulated the various uh, dual energy applications, dual source imaging, uh, rapid KV switching, sandwich detector, and even photon counting. And it turns out that photo counting is a little bit better than dual source for the, uh, for the iodine images, but in everything else, this uh, dual source actually does extremely well. Now, if you compare that to subtraction, then you see it's a substantial difference, actually, we have 50% less noise uh, on uh, the virtual, or actually the pre-contrast image, and the um, 
subtracted image. So in other words, uh, superior technology when it comes to signal-to-noise ratios. The problem is you have to, again, register, and you see a non-registered part up there, and on the lower image is the registered one. The issue is that uh, we can register multiple breath out. It wipes out motions of the parenchymal organs, but in areas where we have bowel motion, there's some residual motion, and if you look very closely down there, you can see that still it's a little bit of bowel motion there. As I mentioned it, two to three times better signal to noise ratio than dual energy at identical cost, but the same indications. Differentiation, tumor or cyst, organ ischemia, tumor vascularization, or treatment response to anti-angiogenic treatment. But you can also, here's an example of bowel ischemia, non-contrast enhanced CT, and a venous phase CT. Uh, yeah, we do see that there is some hyper-enhancement. We're not so sure about the enhancement of the uh, colon, colonic wall if we Look at the subtracted image. We see that there's hypoemia in the uh, left lower quadrant, hyperemia in the um, proximal small bowel, and no perfusion in the colon. Uh, the interesting thing here is that despite the fact that we have normally motion artifacts in patients uh, like that, we get very good subtraction images, which basically means there's no bowel motion left. It's also an indicator of an ileus. So it's a double whammy that we can answer two questions at the same time. We can do also things that is not possible with dual energy, which is not only looking at the classic enhancement like arterial phase minus non-contrast phase, but also the differential enhancement. Look which part of a tumor or which part of a lesion of an organ is mainly perfused during a later phase. In this situation, you can see that it's mainly the renal medulla, which is more enhancing in the nephrographic phase. Pulmonary subtraction, a very close and very uh, frequent application. Here, uh, the main thing is finding uh, obscure small clots that you can see thanks to the distal uh, defects, but mainly it's the assessment of the extent of the perfusion defects, which can be quite uh, yeah, different from what we think we have in clot burden in these patients. We have to keep in mind, however, that we also see perfusion defects in bronchial occlusions or bronchial strictures because of the uh, reflex there we will also reductions in perfusions, which we know from dual energy. Bone subtraction, very similar. You see cortical enhancement for uh, fibrous dysplasia. And to summarize, subtraction technology gives us excellent bone and plaque removal and a contrast boost if you want that for CTA. And iodine mapping for pulmonary embolism, a really big application, but we can do that also in the bowel and for tumor imaging everywhere where we want to know how much or whether there is enhancement in an organ this technique is an excellent alternative to dual energy. Thank you for your attention.